Good afternoon and welcome to the FP Markets Daily Market Analysis. And uh, I suppose good news for uh, for investors out there. We've seen a bit of a bounce, a, a decent bounce really across the uh, bourses, uh, both in the US session and, and of course across into the Asia Pacific time zone today. So um, ASX here in Australia, as you can see here, has bounced uh, nicely off those recent lows. We're back up to 7,300 level. Uh, Nikkei currently trading about a percent higher, 1.2 percent higher, as as is um, topics just over one one percent. So um, obviously we're looking very very hard at the latest variants of COVID. Um, interesting comments from Jerome Powell last night that actually felt that it could lead to more inflationary pressure, um, and that sort of helped the market turn a little bit, to be honest. Um, but I think it it does feel like we've had that shakeout now, and now investors and traders are really looking for the next step. Do we see a massive amount of new COVID infections? How much? What does that really mean to the market now that we have a large amount of um, vaccinations um, in in the in the global economy? Um, and also, how how bad is the new uh, is the new variant? Is that really gonna is that really gonna hit us? Most reports at the moment are still coming out saying that it's very mild. So. Will it really hit markets too much? Um, I, I suppose the betting today is that, that we've seen that initial sell-off with a natural reaction for the markets, um, but a bit of a bounce. And, and that's um, translated across to, to most products as well. <coughs> so I'll just skip across uh, over to um, a, few of the other, a few of the other products. So I'll, I'll go to my favorites, obviously over to foreign exchange here. Um, and as you can see, Aussie, we've seen a little bit of a bounce. We'd normally expect Aussie to bounce in a risk on environment, which we've seen today. It's come back off that 71, the figure um, level, but still not too high, only about 40 pips higher. Um, does seem to be in a little bit of a, a bear trend at the moment, as we've probably seen. Less to do with uh, less to do with the risk, risk off trade and more to do with the expectations of a higher dollar across the board, as US numbers can continue to dominate um, market factoring. Um, I, I suppose looking back to those as well, that, that's why we're seeing um, stocks sort of bounding as well. Numbers still really good out of the US, um, still the most dominant economy in the world. Um, that is leading us at, and, and Asia Pacific took that lead and they've sort of driven on today. Now, skipping across the Tasman uh, to the Kiwi, similar sort of setup really. Good break trades on the dailies and of course the hourlies as well, similar sort of level. Um, we've come off, I would still suggest we're selling, sell on rallies um, for the Kiwi, all things remaining equal, of course. Um, and, and those dollar bulls out there will be looking for better levels to sell, uh, both Kiwi and Aussie. Um, key, Aussie Kiwi, one of my favorites, and you've probably been tracking it a bit with me. Um, the way the RBNZ was talking and the way the RBA was talking even just a couple of months ago or even a month ago, um, I really did feel that interest rate differentials will kick through and start taking us maybe down to that parity party for the guys over over the Tasman. It doesn't look as possible now. We're back up to 104.60. Um, RBA sort of like coming more in line, I suppose, with the rest of the globe. Um, that interest rate differential argument, probably less so. Um, but still keep an eye on it. It's It's you know, it really has traded, I suppose, anywhere on a 107, 108 handle, anywhere on a 102, 103 um, to buy and back. It's, it's been really range bound for a while. Now, skipping over to what what is the, probably the most favorite currency uh, of currency traders out there at the moment. Um, and this is why you can see the volatility we've seen in the cable um, over the last year or so um, and is likely to continue. Still a similar pattern. We're seeing sterling on its lows, dollars on its highs. Um, you know, for the whole year, um, there's that break down through that longer term daily trend line. So not not as hard there, um, but certainly reflected well on the hourlies. And, and I think uh, I think traders are going to continue to look at look at sterling, look at the sterling crosses. Um, certainly one of the most popular ones coming through FP markets at the moment. Um, nearly as it and and most days actually more popular than the single currency. Euros had a bit of a bounce. It's had a good bounce, and that's coincided with those moves off. Um, in stock markets and, um, and risk off moves. So we've seen the dollar depreciate, um, but we're back to around 113. The figure has been moving really nicely you know, over the course of this month, as you can see here, just at the end of October, we're all the way up around 117. Um, the figure all the way down to 112. We are starting to get those moves in currency markets. There are those percentage moves. They're trading nicely on chart patterns as well trend like breaks are coming and trends are following through um keep an eye on that we're starting to see a lot more um, a lot more business coming through the currencies in after what's been 
probably a pretty moribund um, 18 months, really, since the start of the COVID pandemic, um, even longer back, really, I suppose. Um, interest rate differentials. Now we're seeing uh, central banks moving. We're starting to see the currencies move and we're getting some interesting, uh, interesting and decent trading opportunities. This was probably one of the better ones. Um, Way back at the start of October, we saw that break to the top side, the yearly highs in dollar yen. It's moved all that massive, massive move back down on this uh, this fresh Omni COVID variant. Um, that came off those highs, but we'll be certainly keeping an eye on them. It has bottomed out a couple of times, sort of 112.70. That's the break line still. I've kept that in around about 112, the figure. Um, hourly support coming in around about 113 at the moment. So we'll see how that continues to go, but certainly a lot of, uh, a lot of interest in, in both the uh, dollar yen and the yen crosses. Um, CAD, also another big mover. Obviously it's moving in line with that, that big dollar, but it's also moving in line with oil, which is flying around at the moment. Um, obviously oil, oil tracked off quite considerably, had one of its biggest days uh, of the year um, on Friday. This coincided with dollar CAD steaming to the top side, obviously dollar buyers, CAD sellers in line with that oil move. Um, 128 now looks like a bit of a level on the top side. I'll just bring this in a little bit closer for us to have a look at. Um, as you can see here, we've topped out what one, two, three times over the last few days. I think that's gonna be the focus um, based around this former, uh, former resistance trend line as well. Probably a bit of an options action coming in. Keep an eye on the CAD. I think we've got more coming up in it. Um, and there's a bit of data coming out towards the end of the week, as well as uh, central bank speakers. Um, just skipping over to the Swissy, trading really nicely on a technical front. Again, it's dropped off those highs just at, just above uh, 93.60. Previous high you can see back here at the start of October was um, a similar sort of level, just above 93.60. The, the pair I'm looking out for very, very closely is once again Euro Swissy back down on its lows. It is grinding lower. A um, lot of people in the market talking about possible intervention from the SMB. We haven't heard too much from them. Um, keep an eye on that because it is, at, as you can see from this longer term daily chart, multi, multi-year lows. Um, wouldn't surprise me, especially if we see a kick up in uh, um, in COVID cases in Switzerland. Obviously, we've seen Austria uh, in lockdown. Um, not too far across the border. So potential there, I think it's one of those risks just to keep keep an eye on um, and maybe not get too long of the Swiss at the moment. Um, just going over to my mix and match mix and match chart chart page here. Um, something that did occur to me, um, interesting, and I don't, as you probably know, pay that much attention to Bitcoin. It is flying around all over the place. But um, I just threw in this sort of resistance chart line and interesting to see how it's respected this on the top side a couple of times uh, over the last couple of days. So um, could be a little bit of a, a little bit of interest if we get a break to the top side or or certainly some sellers maybe coming in ahead of it with some stops above. Um, gold, as you can see here, like nicely sitting in that range again. And we were talking, I think, not too too long ago that really for most of the year, it's tucked itself nicely into this year. You know, that that 1,900, I think it was a little bit higher than there, 1,950. Um, dollars an ounce, um, but a really good base here around the 1700 or just underneath the 1700. And it's traded that range, as you can see here, sort of three or four times. So um, moving forward, do we see a breakout? Probably going to keep in that range, I would say, until early new year, but something to keep an eye on. Here's that oil move that we were talking about earlier with the CAD, did break down very strongly. You know, we've seen highs up here around 85. That's the move on the back of the latest COVID news. Um, but we've just recovered a little bit of ground here from sub 70 with just around $70 a barrel. Again, um, that's that oil, uh, sorry, gold chart over there on the left. So just keeping up on what's been going on here in, in Asia. Um, Hang, Hang Seng's, um, not entirely sure Hang Seng's open, actually. I'll have a quick check on that. ASX sitting there, they're dead on 1% uh, up. A um, little bit little bit of a move back. And I think that's, that's quite nice to see. Um, investors are pretty happy with what's going on. Um, I'll just move over to the uh, to the yield yield charts as well. Here's the barometer um, U.S. 10-year that has been moving around a lot recently, as we'll all know. Um, topped out again near those recent highs. Obviously dropped back down um, in line with with the uh, news the other day, and we're around about 150. Um, keep an eye on that. Still plenty of movement across uh, across some of the other. Um, 
currencies and countries. Um, but that that ten year barometer, I think, is a big focus, big focus for a lot of us traders, of course, as well as the Fed. Um, so that's pretty much it for me today. Um, one thing to look out for as we move forward. Obviously, we're just in that changeover week. So um, end of the week tends to be end of the month tends to be very very, um, I suppose, shallow on uh, tier one data coming out. As we move through the week, we've got some of the big stuff coming out, start of the month. Um, the big one, of course, being non-farm payrolls on Friday evening. Given the volatility we've seen across currencies and across stocks and across everything else, um, and the potential for a big volatile number um, one way or the other in non-farm payrolls, I'd keep an eye on things on Friday, uh, Friday afternoon in New York and Friday night for us here in Australia. Liquidity does start to thin a bit. We could see some really exacerbated moves. Um, Data so far has been relatively quiet. As I said, we've had the Fed chairman um, talking. We've got CAD GDP out uh, later today. But as the week moves on, some bigger numbers coming through. We've got ADP on Thursday, Bank of England Governor Bailey speaking, Fed chairs talking again. I think he's testifying in front of the Senate committee. Um, ISM manufacturing PMI out in the States. Um, and but the real, real key stuff, I think that we're all going to be keeping an eye on as the non-farm payroll data, followed by ISM services PMI in the States, late for us here in Australia, um, right in the middle of that London trading um, trading time um, on Friday. Also trading the CAD on that one, a little bit of a caveat, they've got their unemployment numbers at exactly the same time. So you can see a little bit of uh, a little bit of some strange moves in the loony, not for the first time. So good luck with your trading. If you need anything from us here at FP Markets, please do not hesitate to contact us. Thanks very much and have a cracking day. Cheers.